starting with any scene what I'm going to do is take you through the steps of creating a sort of fluorescent electron microscope effect so the first thing to do here is reset the sky and we'll set the sky settings up so I've reset the sky go into the sky lab I don't need any sun and moon shadows or any diffuse and I need the atmosphere to be turned off and I'm going to set that by holding the alt key down to bring this menu up to being fully black the final setting for the atmosphere is I want the sun to be behind the objects in the scene so if I hold control and alt key down and double click on the sun roller ball you'll see this is a representation in the wireframe of the moon if I hold alt control and alt key down and click on the scene it'll bring in this representation of the sun into the wireframe but if you look here it's not above the horizon yet so I'll position it as close to being directly behind the scene as possible and then just lift the roller ball up so the sun's above the horizon so that's providing our main light source to create this effect the next thing I'll do is set the render options up so go into the render options menu here it wants to be premium effects you can select fairly low rays per pixel for speed if you find there's too much noise in the image then increase the rays per pixel you want blurry transmissions checked you don't need any reflections and a maximum ray depth of 4 is fine for this effect so that's that's all set up ready uh, the default setting is usually about 6 it doesn't really matter this is going to render quite quickly so it's not a concern check out of that now select all the materials of everything you've seen go into the material lab and uh, reset the material to default if it wasn't already at the default material that obviously got that setting from the ground plane and you need diffuse fully black well that's handy because fully black's there specular halo hold the alt key down to bring up the menu and set it to fully wide that's an important step then we want 100% specularity 100% metallicity 100% transparency the color that is the specular color will be the color of the object so I'll pick I don't know a, sort of a, a blue color for example your choice and this control here if you want it to be very bright you can set that down to low values if you want it to be dark set it to higher values I'll show you bright bright tends to be quite noisy so at that point you might want higher rays per pixel diffusion is not playing a part in this so that can be set to zero the uh, the diffuse color is operating through the metallicity control which in turn influence the specularity so having set that up we should be ready to have a quick render and you'll see that uh, the render times are quite low for a premium effect it's only taking seconds in fact but you'll see what I mean about the noise but in some respects the noise sort of lends to the effect because you do get that sort of noise in the uh, electron microscope images alternatively as I said in the material lab if you set this value right up to show you the other extreme you'll find that the effect you get is quite smooth and uh, you don't need a very high rays per pixel to achieve this and again the render time is low only seconds so I thought that was quite an interesting effect uh, stylized and unusual for Bryce it doesn't look very much like a Bryce render I'm not quite sure what it could be used for but uh, I thought it was just something you know you might like to uh, to experiment with uh, what I was aiming for was to try and simulate some kind of subsurface scattering so I'll continue to work on that because that's a very important feature for creating the effect of realistic skin or materials like jade or milk where the light goes into the material and diffuses but uh, obviously this is some sort of byproduct of that experiment right that's the end of the tutorial